Hey everybody and welcome to 16 States of Soccer. You're back with your hosts, Hunter, Simon, and Stefan. Today, we have an awesome episode for you guys. We have an interview with St. Pauli's starting goalkeeper, Robin Himmelman. You mean like the number one? Yeah, like the number one Robin Himmelman. We were super excited about this. So let's crack those beers and let's get ready to sit back and listen to this interview. <laughs> yeah, I think it's quite. I, I think it's quite an interesting market, the uh, the US market, even for for us. We did uh, two tours in the in the states back in two eighteen and two nineteen. So, yeah, I think uh, we have a good fan base over there, and um, so I'm sure that there there are some people interested in interview and podcast as well. So let's straight jump into the questions, um, Robin. In your personal soccer biography, so from playing soccer as a kid to being a Bundesliga player, which three stations have been the most significant for your career path? Yeah, of course, it's, it's not that easy to say, but um, yeah, I played for three teams as a senior. So I think maybe these are the most significant um, stations. Um, I started my senior career in, uh, in Essen, yes, uh, very traditional, uh, traditional club. And um, I had my first experience there in the fourth division. Played about uh, 20 games as a, as a youngster. Um, the club had high ambitions. Um, yeah, we, we were not, not good enough, let me say it that way, uh, to, to keep up with these ambitions. Um, struggled a lot. Um, and uh, after two years, uh, I went to uh, Schalke 04, um, the second team. Uh, had a good uh, goalkeeper coach who is now um, the the head of goalkeeping uh, in uh, Red Bull. So um, I learned a lot from him and also from another goalkeeper coach who coached um, Neuer, Fehrmann and all the guys in uh, in the Schalke Youth Academy. So this was quite uh, quite interesting for you, me personal, even though it was just the second uh, team of a of a professional Bundesliga team. Um, it was good for, for learning. Uh, I was 20, 21 to 23 years old and then I moved to Sao Pauli. And uh, yeah, since then I play here in Hamburg and um, this is, of course, it's, um, yeah, was the, the most important thing. Uh, my first uh, professional Bundesliga game here uh, in second league and uh, all the others that came after. So I think all my three stations in the, in the senior were very important and then in in the juniors i had the uh, year to year i changed clubs um close to my hometown so there was not that significant uh, part maybe all of them played a role in in becoming a professional soccer player but um yeah i think in the end uh, the three senior stations are the the most significant ones so what is it that made you interested in being the goalkeeper is it just the fact that you're the last line of defense and it's you and the striker and that's it? Yeah, you can, you can jump from zero to hero in, uh, in a second. Um, that's the, it's quite an interesting thing. You have, uh, I think, the biggest responsibility on the pitch um, because almost every mistake you make is uh, not a 100% goal, but close to that. So. It's quite important that you that you keep up your your focus uh, 90 minutes plus extra time um, or plus added time and um, yeah of course this the zero to hero thing is uh, is what makes it really interesting. Yeah, of course, and you have to be able to read the player and react within you know a tenth of a second. So yes, yeah, yeah sometimes your your uh, minutes or uh, a long a long part you're not part of the game because. Uh, yeah, you you have no no touch with the ball, with foot or, or or hand. You're just waiting for something to happen, and then suddenly you have to be you have to be there. And that's what I what I mean with focus. You you can't sprint. You can't you can't run like crazy to to um, yeah, to cope with your emotions and and your feelings. You just really have to to keep up the the focus all the um, 
the game long and this is not not that easy so it's more like uh after the game it's more uh tiring and uh, exhausting for the head than for than for my body yeah i'm sure it is <laughs> yeah. so let's state your sporting ambitions for the upcoming season are there some main goals for you as a as a goalkeeper like uh, maximum goals to catch or some getting better in on the line situations or in one to one heads up situations with the striker or is it just for the team and you have no personal ambitions yeah it's Of course, of course, I have. Uh, the first ambition is uh, to improve day by day. Um, it's it's hard to to just say, okay, it's this or that, where, where the focus is, because um, yeah, goalkeeping is uh, being more and more uh, diverse, and uh, you have to be you have to be able to grab balls on the line to react uh, very quickly to. Um, as uh, as you said before to read the uh, the play read the uh, what the opponent's idea of of playing is and um then of course um corners can you go out can you catch the ball do you have to stay on the line um the same uh, with crosses so um yeah it's it's all that it, i think it's a very complex complex uh, game and um yeah i try of course to improve um every part of that so yeah my 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 aim and my goal is to to just get better day by day so but no specific um section of of goalkeeping like catching crosses or something yeah i think one one of uh, one of the biggest goals is that um i don't want to make any mistake if possible okay. because i think i think um even if you if you look at the uh, at the bundesliga you will I don't think you will see any goalkeeper playing a season without mistakes because it's no. just so easy to make them. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, for me, my aim is to look back at the season at the end and say, I maybe had maybe I had one game where I could have uh, really done better um, in a certain situation. But um, this is one of my my biggest my biggest uh, goals this year. And um, On the other hand, of course, we conceded way too much, too many goals uh, last last season. So um, when we had a very strong season uh, five almost five years ago, I think we played. Uh, we we um, got the ball out of the goal. Uh, we had a shutout in uh, 16 games. Mm. So of course, if you can if you can uh, reach that number again, about 50 percent um, with no goal conceded, I think this is. Yeah, this will this will bring you to the top five, maybe of the of the league table. So of course, it's also um, one of our aims to get as less goals as possible. What you said about um, corners, I, I have noticed through just watching that the best way to defend against corners is the goalie just coming out and punching that ball as far away as he can. I, I've always realized that's the way to just in the corner right there, no questions. <laughs> Yeah, of course it is, but it's not it's not that easy if you have about uh, let me let me check maybe 14 players in front of you and around you. So it's not like um, you may see on a TV. I uh, just just go out and grab the ball or punch it away. And but of course it's our one of our um, things where I can uh, improve a lot. I think um, because yeah, it's always. Um, It's always a, a, a style of courage and um, like, and also confidence to to just go out to say, "Hey, I'm there," and then uh, give uh, the whole team um, confidence in, in 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 helping them defending these uh, these situations. Yeah, I'm sure it is far harder than it looks. Yeah. Um, of course, yeah. <laughs> Okay, let's get into culture a little bit because what we try to do in our podcast is not only to talk about the sports soccer itself and our different clubs, we also want to give people abroad an idea about the culture of the clubs, but also of the cities and areas they are in. So my next question would be, how would you describe your club, St. Pauli, in three words? Yeah, I thought about it. Uh... <laughs> Because yeah, 
I can imagine it's not it's not easy just to no. to pick three words. Um, I would say um, magical, mm -hmm. different, and um, yeah, the the third one is like. There's so many, so many words I have in my mind to to describe the to describe the club. Ambitious would um, count. <laughs> yeah, you can say uh, ambitious, uh, passionate. Um, but which club is not passionate? So yes, yes, of course. That's why I would say yeah, different is uh, is maybe a good word um, yes. because we our our supporters try to try to do many things in a in a different way and. Yeah, maybe there's one one thing that is always on our uh, clothes that's uh, non-established. So this is maybe the third the third word to to mm -hmm. say uh, or to describe it. If it uh, it has to be uh, three words. Okay. okay, perfect. So go more into the city. In your opinion, in which way does St. Pauli embody the city of Hamburg in general, so the whole city, but also the Schanzenviertel district for our English uh, listeners? Uh, the Schanzenviertel is like in Hamburg district that is traditionally embracing a multicultural alternative lifestyle. How is this mirrored in the club? Yeah, I think uh, Hamburg in general is very open-minded. Um, you have uh, yeah, very, very different neighborhoods um, and the Schanzenviertel in, uh, in, in, in specific. Um, as you said, it's uh, alternative um, Political, in a in a in a way more I would say more left wing of course, um, and um, yeah you 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 can come as you are that's what uh, what I think if you go to if you go to uh, the the Schanze to Schanzenviertel to to all the streets um, to all these narrow streets and you see people dressing yeah just as they want. And then no one really cares. So for me, it's sometimes it's like um, when I travel to New York and I see people just um, wearing whatever they want, it, it, it makes me feel a bit the same. So you feel like nobody really cares what, what, uh, what the neighbors do, but not in a, not in a, uh, not in a bad way so yes. that they're not interested, yes. but that they just, let them let them live how they how they want to as long as they they don't hurt anybody or they have any dumb ideas yeah so this is what, especially here we hear from the south which is a more conservative yeah. place we love hamburg for the openness you just mentioned yeah. right yeah. um nevertheless sometimes it feels like there is anger in the air because there is a rivalry in hamburg between the two big clubs St. Pauli and HSV HSV. Could you tell us more about this rivalry or the city derby about its origins or maybe if you feel it in the city, can you actually feel it on game day, see it on game day? Because I think our listeners are interested in that. Why is there tension between clubs? Or is there actually tension or is it just the fans? Mm. <sighs> It's it's of course of course uh, there there's a huge rivalry um, between the fans um, that's that's a fact so our supporters were, went crazy when um, when uh, the house fell relegated and um, that was uh, I was sure there there will be two derbies in uh, what was it two to eighteen to nineteen. Um, so yeah, the, the tension was the tension was high the week before. Uh, yeah, supporters from both sides went went crazy. Um, first derby uh, for seven and a half years, and um, yeah, we we also felt it. And and the first the first game we played in uh, away in the Volkspark Stadion. So it was just like. The beginning was crazy. The first ten minutes, we were very lucky not to not to concede a goal. And after, you could feel that no no team wanted to lose and wanted to do any mistakes. So it was like after the game, I had a lot of people telling me, "What was that? That was not that was not really a derby. It was just like two teams really being calm and not being aggressive and waiting for something to happen." Um, 
yeah, and then the the next three derbies last season and the season before um, the game at home, they were completely crazy. The first one at home, we lost 4-0. That was, uh, yeah, it was really tough, of course, and um, and really hard for for all of us. Um, and then last season, we we yeah we made it big and amazing with the two wins. Um, we had a it was for it was lucky for us that it was uh, two weeks before corona mm. because um yeah the the neighborhood went went crazy we we had dinner uh, in an italian restaurant after the game uh, like spontaneously and uh, there were like two three four maybe 500 supporters around having bengalos and and started cheering at us when they saw that we were uh, we were in and this was really crazy we have some videos of that and uh, yeah, this is something I will never, I will never forget in my life. So when you're in the stadium and you look up and you see the fans just going crazy, like you can feel it, and it either makes you nervous or pumps you up. Myself, it um, it pops me up a bit, but I also try to just focus on on what my yeah, what my aim and my my goals and what my task is, and this is just getting a clean sheet. Um, yeah, and and everything else is just like you you can feel it a bit, but I think um, you don't you don't realize the world how it is. You just you're on your tunnel. You just uh, have the eye on the ball on the game, and you're not having any focus on on fans, supporters, or not that much that it affects mm -hmm. you a, a lot. But of course. Like when we're having a, having a draw in the last five minutes and, and our stadium at home, all the fans go crazy. Of course we can feel it and maybe it, it sets some, uh, some energy free. Um, and it's, yeah, it's always great if you score a goal at that time because then, yeah, you feel like, uh, I don't know the uh, good English word for that. Um, in German, uh, you would say Tollhaus. Yes. Um, so you can make translated. Yes. <laughs> so like all <laughs> hell is breaking good, news. Yeah. yeah, you can find a good uh, good English word for that. And yeah, it's that that's basically how it is. Oh, I can promise you it's good for us fans too. It does the same thing to us. <laughs> yeah, cool. That's good to hear. Yeah. Okay, let's uh, stick to the pitch and, and to the fans. Um, are there in the Milan tour any special fan rituals or traditions which come up every time or you like the most? I think one uh, one tradition um, is that we play the opponent's anthem about 10 oh. minutes before before kickoff. I think it's quite special. You don't have that too often. No. Anywhere else, um, we had a lot of uh, we have a lot of choreos from our from our supporters. They like I think quite different uh, day by day or week by week. Um, yeah, this is something that helps bells, of course, when we enter the pitch. Yeah, I think there are a lot of there are a lot of rituals from small uh, fan and supporter club, but I'm not that much into into their rituals, um, where they have breakfast or whatever <laughs> to start <laughs> to start the the game they write, and um, yeah, this I think these these. Two, three things I mentioned that are the ones you would, um, yeah, you can you can feel and you can see um, if you once at the Milan tour and you say, oh, they play uh, they play the anthem of the opponent. It's it's not usual and oh, they they held bells of course and then always say, oh, you had a good, great choreo where the supporters worked for uh, days and weeks. Um, they're always quite special and. Uh, yeah, they're always cool. It's always cool to see. And if you enter the pitch, you uh, have a have a quick look look over your shoulder to the to the thousand stands, um, and you see or to to the Gegengrade, and um, yeah, you see you see them having their having their choreos. Um, they're proud of that. Of course, they are, um, and they can be proud of it. Um, it's quite special. Of course, we are also after stories that are not written somewhere else. So we wanted to ask, what's the funny story that you experienced in the St. Pauli locker room? That you can tell us in an interview, of course. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
so crazy that it's fun to hear, but nobody will hate you afterwards, right? Yeah. <laughs> it's like it's it's hard in 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 general. It's hard to tell uh, stories that <laughs> happened which happened in the locker room. <laughs> okay. um, but as you can imagine. Um, Sometimes, uh, sometimes adults uh, become kids. Um, it's yeah. There, there's so much, so much to say, and I, I don't even remember a lot because it's like day by day. If you would, if you, if you enter, uh, if you enter um, our locker uh, and just be there a day, I think you would have uh, a lot of funny, funny things to remember. But for us, yeah, we're we're used to it. Um, about the little jokes um, and uh, yeah, oh, all these all these little oh, things man. that happen uh, like day by day by day and then and, and hour by hour. Um, and I don't have that that one funniest mm -hmm. moment. So yeah, I hope you're not disappointed. No, it definitely it. sounds no, like not. you have a lot of fun, and we I think we got a glimpse into the atmosphere. Right. Yeah, of morning. course, the, the fun the, com the fun comes uh, with the results. Of course, um, if you're if you're not having good results and if you don't really have um, yeah the the feeling and and the atmosphere, it's it's hard to create it in the in the locker. Um, and as you can imagine, if you're on the top of the league or on the top three, top five, and if you feel that the next game you can win it and you're very very focused on that you can also have fun so it's not that you have to be focused like crazy and you you're not allowed to laugh or anything and i think this is a big part that you yeah if you have 30 or 25 characters sitting in a locker we're all we're already very different um yeah but we work together and uh, the common common goal to to get the best results on the weekend as possible and this, uh, it also makes fun. It's hard work. Sometimes, uh, sometimes it's fun, and um, <laughs> mm -hmm. it's it's amazing if it's both um, with the results uh, on the weekend, and then um, yeah, the atmosphere is uh, better than of course if you're losing uh, and if you're losing streak. So um, yeah, we work we work for that um, for the winning streak. Um, and for, for the fun in the next couple of weeks. Okay, um, then I have another question because we hope, of course, that some of our listeners, when they are over here in Germany, they come to Hamburg and they visit a game, actually. So if they are in and around Hamburg, what would you say is the most traditional Hamburg signature food and drink? I don't want to, to make any commercial for, for Astra beer, but I think... <laughs> uh, uh -huh. I think not not that um, it's only because of their other sponsors um mm -hmm. i think the astra the astra beer is a, is a famous one um all all over germany if you're say hey i'm drinking i want an astra everybody knows okay you're from hamburg or you're close from close to hamburg living close to hamburg and um i think food i would say fish in in general because we're close uh, close by the sea but um the sweet thing is uh Franzbrötchen. so it's like cinnamon bun yeah. but uh quite special and um if you like you're from the south so if i go to the thousand uh, i order franz at the bakery they're like what the hell what do you want and yes. same same uh, at my at my hometown i'm living uh, or I'm, i was born um in the western part of germany so you can't you can't get a Franz mm -hmm. over there. Right. You may get the cinnamon bun, but it's not. Yeah, it's a cinnamon bun, but it's not a Franz And mm -hmm. I think uh, I would say yeah, it's probably Franz and, and Astra. I think you can mix uh, mix both together. <laughs> okay, perfect. Let's stick to the culinary side for a moment. You read that with your partner in life, you tested cafes in Hamburg and pu even published a voucher book called Kaffee Glück, so Coffee Happiness Translated. Yeah. Just tell us more about this interesting project, you, maybe your favorite coffee house, and of course, the experience. If you as a ball player go out for coffee, um, do people recognize you? Is, do you have privacy? How is it? Um, 
yeah let's let's start with the past um uh, we thought about you know when we lived in in uh, in Düsseldorf that it could be interesting to like have something like a like a voucher book for coffee and for coffee shops and then we moved to Hamburg and um yeah my girlfriend was just like okay let's let's just try uh, maybe we fail but maybe it's going to be an interesting um project you know um, what I'm right now <laughs> pardon we, we, we know the feeling right now. We're like, starting our podcast. Yeah, 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 yeah. Of course, you, you, never, you never know. You never mm. know what's going to happen. Just try your best um, and everything, everything can happen. Um, yeah, and that's, that's just what we did. Um, tested a lot of cafes. Um, I think a few of them are still, are still alive because, um, yeah, it's, it's a very tough business. Um, running a running a cafe you don't have that much much time for for anything else um so um there but there is a lot of yeah there's a lot of nice nice spots where you can where you can have coffee and and sweet things breakfast i don't have that um that one where I say i'm there i'm there every you can meet me there every afternoon mm-hmm. um after training um I had friends of mine uh, or friends of mine had a cafe, but they closed it um, short uh, before Corona happened, just because they said we we want little thing of our private life and not just working and working and working and even our free days we we need to do uh, office things and um, order stuff and food and yeah, so they closed unfortunately, um, but it's not a problem to to find another one in Hamburg so. I'm very open for for new ones, and yeah, every you can see uh, every every week there is a new one opening. Um, so it's also quite interesting to see the to see the, the development um, where where are new cafes um, open, where old ones closed, or where they just change the location. It's it's quite interesting, and um, yeah, we had fun with that. The project ended, I think, uh, one and a half years ago because it just, yeah, couldn't. Or she um, she gave it to to a friend of her uh, of her who is now, yeah, more or less the owner of uh, of the of the book of the voucher book. So it's still there. You can still buy it, but okay. she's not that much involved anymore. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, privacy privacy is for me uh, more or less easy. Uh, of if I go to if I go to Schanze or maybe to to some poly neighborhood, then it can be that um, yeah, some people recognize me. But it's not that they come to me and say, "Hey, we want to talk to you, and you have to improve, you have to you have to play better, or whatever." It's just when my friends say, "Hey, they they had on." They looked at you. They had they had an eye on you. They maybe know who you are, and I say, yeah, I don't I don't care that much. So and in Shansa, as I said before, yeah, just everyone is living their own life, and they don't care that much. Sometimes it can happen, but on the other hand, there are so many famous people living in Hamburg. So if you as a how can I say it? as a normal as a normal people as a normal as a normal guy. <laughs> If you would say uh, go to to every um, celebrity or a little more known uh, guy or woman, yeah, you can you you can't stop. There's a musician. There's a there's a soccer player. There's a, yeah, whatever. So there's so there's so many uh, actor and there's so many people here um, being being well known. So it's not really a problem to having my privacy and it's it's good i like that yeah i'm sure you've gotten used to it as well you know living in the city that you play in i am sure it's become natural to you yeah yeah of, of course of course but i think it's also different if you have two clubs in 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 your city like if i if i look at um yeah maybe cologne if i pick cologne now because close to my close to my home close to my hometown and there is really all eyes on the first football club. So mm. all eyes on SFC Cologne. And there is no second club. And so if you're playing there, 
of course, all eyes are focused on you and also Cullen and, or Cologne, they're living a lot of actors and, and actresses, but the, the city is really crazy with, uh, with the football club. And here you have, yeah, you have two clubs. You have like a little more, maybe, of course, the high slow is bigger. Uh, right now they're playing the third season, unfortunately for them in, in the second league, but they see themselves as uh, maybe team fighting for the international spots. So, But they're doing well to become uh, smaller and smaller, I think. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they they yeah in the last couple of years they it seems like they're doing everything to to become smaller but it's nothing I I have to I have to talk about and it's not my business <laughs> but um, yeah I think uh, that the fact that Hamburg is that big and there's as I as I said before there's so many people from all areas uh, being famous it's not really really that much of a problem and of course sometimes it's nice if if small uh, small kids want a want a picture or um, a signature i like i really like this because um okay if it yeah for for them it's it's quite special then to to meet um the player they see when they're in the stadium or in on television so and and i really it's really cute to see them like yeah running for that for that picture or for that uh, signature Thanks. Okay. So we are now all sending all our kids we know to <laughs> Hamburg and look out for... Uh, for yeah, it's, yeah, they can come. Yeah, I'm a teacher, so I will do field trips all the time. Yeah, sometimes I wear glasses and masks, so then it's quite <laughs> hard for them to, to find me. Okay, yes, I can imagine. Because I was a goalie myself as I was a young player, but um, then it, I kind of stopped growing. So <laughs> yeah, it's quite hard to to be a goalkeeper when you're just. Uh, yes, I, I yeah, struggle yeah. to read a uh, one point eighty meters. So yeah, then it then it's then it's quite hard. Uh, you need yes, a, a, I think there. Fabian Pates uh, was around about uh, one point eight uh, meters, and there was another goal here. I think back with Fabian yes, was there, yeah, some some there are some players that wouldn't fit in that um, that measurement, of course, but um, yeah, I think one goalie out of thousand maybe yeah. is maybe smaller than, yeah, we're talking yes. about the German, German measurement now, so 185. Yes. So you have to be amazing, talented and skilled if you are uh, smaller than that, but yeah. Yes, because you have to compete with guys who are taller and talented as well, so it's quite hard. <laughs> yeah, 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 of course. Okay, thanks. One other question concerning clubs, because our listeners crave to get more information about other soccer clubs than the usual ones you always see on international TV. Do you have, playing with St. Pauli, one like Buki opponent that you don't like too much to play against for any reason? Um, and is there like one funnest team where you say, I always love to play against these guys? Um, yeah, we in the last couple of years, we struggled a lot against Aue. Mm -hmm. um, I can't really say why. <laughs> but um, yeah, it was last, we, we drove uh, to Aue um, and we drove back with nothing. And... Um, Except last season's home game, we we also had a lot of problems against um, against them at home, um, and and yeah, there's no real explanation for that. We just um, always saying why or is it always happening against them? Why aren't we not able to like break through that um, streak and 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 just just finish it uh, finish it and. Um, yeah, we did last last home uh, last home game against ours, so we won. Mm -hmm. I hope maybe now it's broken against uh, against them. And um, yeah, we have a, a really bad record in Heidenheim. We lost all four, five matches in Heidenheim since they are playing in uh, um, in second league. Um, now on uh, the next next game is is Heidenheim um, at home for us. It's 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 quite good. At first to play, play them at home, um, but um, 
Yeah, on the other end, I, I know a lot of players from Heidenheim, so it's always anyway, even if we have a bad record against them, it's always like nice and good to play against against them and it's there's always a good atmosphere. Um hard, tough, um both teams trying to win. Um but it's always good after you you, you talk and say, Yeah, oh, today you were better and shit happened, uh, we didn't do that. Um and yeah, this is becoming more and more uh, like for me. I'm getting used to the other players more and more. Um, with some of them, uh, yeah, we have like maybe a, a call every month, um, just talking not only about about football uh, and about the, the the current situation, but also about the development of football, um, especially now in the, in the times of. Covid and Corona, Upcoming so um, yeah, this is this is like we lost against them, or we lost every every game in Heidenheim. But anyway, it's nevertheless a good uh, a good feeling to play against them. Um, and um, the records, I think we had we had an amazing record against Kaiserslautern, mm -hmm. um, and uh, Braunschweig is not that bad, I think. So um, yeah, we're um, looking forward to to Braunschweig because Kaiserslautern is still struggling with the promotion. Yeah, and I think this is like the teams I would say, and um, yeah, of course the the derbies now are, are a big book focus, of course as well. Okay, um, then one question about last game day. Uh, Daniel Kofi turned the game around on Monday. Um, it seemed like St. Pauli would lose, but he shot two goals in minutes 84 and 86, I think. So within 88 seconds. Um, I'm sure our listeners will watch out for him. And of course, for you now, knowing you more personal now. But give us <laughs> one other outstanding colleague of yours all of our listeners should watch out for this season. Uh, yeah, good good to hear uh, that. Um, um, yeah, amazing, amazing last uh, five minutes in, in Bochum or 10 minutes. Um, Kofi did very well um, scoring, scoring these two goals. And um, yeah, I think we have a lot of, lot of talented and skilled players in our roster. So it's, it's really hard for me now to pick out just one. Um, I would say um, that maybe the experienced guys, they're better known than, than the young ones. Um, and we have uh, like three, I think, very special young players. One is on loan from Frankfurt. It's uh, Rodrigo Salazar. Mm -hmm. I think he can, he can be very good, good player in, uh, in the next, in the next years. Um, the same is uh, with Finn, Finn Olebeka. He's, um, Yeah, playing for the club for a long time, also as a junior. Um, yeah, we'll see what his next step will be, but I think he's also uh, one guy to watch out for in the next season or in this season and also in the next in the next couple of years. And um, then we had the the transfer of uh, Lukas Dashna in in the summer from from Duisburg. He did very well in uh, in third league last year with Duisburg and yeah I think his uh, substitution um, on Monday was also very important he had uh, the two assists of course he would say uh, he, he had to score the first <laughs> first goal uh, on his own but um, yeah it doesn't matter and he had an amazing touch um, as an assist for, for Kofi on a second goal. So I think maybe these three players, they're all very young. I think a 20, 21 year old. So yeah, I think we can, we could hear a lot of them uh, in the next couple of years in football, maybe here, I don't know how they improve, but um, in football in general. Yeah, that's something we really tried to stress to our listeners as well as how good the Bundesliga is for younger players because there is a lot of younger players in the Bundesliga and there's a great youth program in Germany. So go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. The, the, the rosters are getting younger and younger uh, year by year, season by season. Um, 
so it's also really hard. I know a lot of like old players that were not really old 10 years ago, but now they're like 28 and older and they seemed like old players that are really struggling to, to get contracts and uh, to get long-term contracts um, because we have really, really good talented young players um, where you can, of course, make money with on one hand. Um, they can help you a lot on pitch. And on the other hand, if uh, you give them a contract for three or four years and you, you sell them after two, of course, this is, um, I won't say easy money, but yeah, it's, it's a good possibility for, for a club to, yeah, to make money with a, with a young player. And um, that's what a lot, of, a lot of teams, a lot of clubs are focusing on. Um, yeah, and this is why, why the rosters, I think they're, they're getting younger and younger. Um, and of course, so now if you're a young player, you also play against younger players. And um, as it was maybe in two to five, so 15 years ago, um, 23 was young. Yes. So under 25, under 23 was young. And now 21 or younger is young. And sometimes 23 year old players, they have an experience of three, no more, five to six seasons in, in Bundesliga. So they are the experienced players which were uh, 28 in 2005. So this changed a little bit. So I'm the oldest player in, the, in our roster with 31. Um, I think 15 years ago, this uh, wouldn't be like this. Yeah, I mean, look now, like uh, BVB, they have Mukaku, who's only 15 years old. I mean, yeah. that's incredibly young yeah. to be in the first team. I mean... They just they just waiting um, for uh, for his birthday to yes. let them play in uh, in first team. I think mm -hmm. he, he has to be 16, and then he um, he's allowed to play in uh, in Bundesliga. I think soon it will happen. Yeah, definitely. So to kind of branch off of this um, last question, because we know you want to get home after training all day. So. Um, since we do have American listeners, and a lot of them who yeah. are just getting into the Bundesliga, what would you say to them about why the Bundesliga is so special compared to all the other leagues in the world? Good, good, uh, good question. Um, it's like, for me, it's not that easy to compare, to be honest, because I'm not really watching a lot of... Um, a lot of other leagues because sometimes you you just get rid of all these Champions League, Europa League, um, Premier League, Serie A, Serie B, Segunda, Primera, whatever you can, <laughs> Nations League. So there's there's football and for you it's soccer um, in on, on TV like 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 every day you can you can see everything you can watch every everything you want. Um, so sometimes I really like to watch different sports or just no sports um so for that it's it's not that easy to to compare i think um yeah we have we have a lot of as uh, as said before uh, we have a lot of good and really talented and skilled uh, young players um i know a lot of people say that premier league is the is the best league of the world of course they have the biggest money and um they may can they may are able to to buy the best players in the world but i think the the league is very competitive even even though bayern is having this uh eight year streak of winning the winning the title um but last season i think they they struggled a lot till they changed the till they changed the coach and then, of course, it was after they, they won uh, in Dortmund. Yeah, it, it was a little boring, depending on the championship. But um, I think at the end, if you, if you look at all these, all these clubs, so, so every team can, can win every, every game. So there's not like you can say, OK, of course, this is obvious. This and that team will, of course, win. And I think they, 
in my in my in my eyes and my from my point of view, every game is tied, and there are small things that decide who who wins that. And um, I think we we also have a lot of very very good players from all over the world, not just German talented young players, but but also internationals, very good international players. Um, and this is what, what makes it interesting for me to to watch if I have time and if I want to. So at this point, I think we have to say heartfelt thanks for your time, but not only your time, also your openness to talk to you're, us. You're welcome. It was fun. Enjoyed it. <laughs> um, and we hope that some of our listeners will find a way to Hamburg, get crazy in Schanzenviertel, get some Franzbrötchen, Asa, yes. and check by a St. Pauli game. And I'm sure they yeah. will. Of course. And if uh, they don't drink alcohol, they may try a Viva Con Agua water. I think okay. they'll do. Yes. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so enjoy your evening. I'm Thanks. Sure we stay Thanks. in touch and we will watch you again on TV. Right. Do it. Do yeah. it. Thank Have you, a good Robert. one. Bye bye. Take care. Ciao. Bye. All right. So there you have it. Our interview with Robin Himmelman. I don't know about you guys, but this was an awesome interview to do. It was really, really cool. Like it was an interview with Robin Hood. Yeah. And I'm actually the club itself like their media personnel and Robin Himmelman, they were super friendly and like super laid back. It was really surprising because uh, as most of you guys know, we're just a fan-based podcast. We have no media backing. We have no support. We don't get paid for this. And so for them to be so friendly and open to this and laid back about it, it was a really cool experience. And I think we have to admit, we really had some technical issues at the beginning, but they were so laid back. They were so cool. Yeah, I was really anxious that it would say like, we planned for 30 minutes. You're fucking around with your technology for 20. We don't have time for the shit, but it wasn't that way. They were so nice to us, actually accepted us for being rookies to that podcast game. And there was so much appreciation, appreciation for us, but also for the idea to bring our love for soccer to the States. And this is why we're here for, right? This was a really great experience. Yeah, it really was, especially for a first interview ever, like my first time ever talking to a professional player even. It was super cool to see that there's still guys, even though they're famous, they're super laid back and they care about their fans and interact with you like you're a normal person. They don't let it go to their head, if you get what I'm saying. Yeah, concerning normal person, I was afraid that they would check our podcast beforehand and see that I have a HSV jersey on the cover, but I think they didn't. <laughs> no. Yes, and I think maybe the laid back, and I think this uh, laid back situation and this laid back attitude of Robin Himmelman may come from the from the sporting side because if uh, some of you know that last year they expressed the big goal to get to the first league in like two years and um, but they kind of turned out that it wasn't that successful of a season that as they wanted it to be it they turned at the end uh, only at the 14th place and not under the four, first three teams and so they fired the old coach uh, and they hired a new one and it was uh, Timo Schulz he's the the coach of the of the amateur team and for this year they only have the the goal like uh, to end up at a single digit position at the at the schedule and uh, so maybe the whole situation at the club is more relaxed and uh, not like so ambitious and so eager uh, to get promoted to the first league. Yeah, and they just tied their last game against Bochum 2-2. So I'd say that's a good start. You know, a tie or a win, I'd be happy with either. So especially for the first game of the season. Okay, guys, you told us more about the sporting side. I shortly want to dive into culture. 
especially beer culture. This is because a nice looking young blonde girl from Bavaria actually, um, so shout out to Anna from Munich, she asked us a question. She said, um, guys, I want to hear more about beer culture and soccer culture. So the love story for the two Hamburg city teams is actually mirrored in the love story for beer. One beer that was already mentioned by Robin was Astra. Astra beer is the St. Pauli fan beer. Um, there is even a slogan like it's brewed for St. Pauli with love. And the funny thing is most people don't know about that, but it started out with the name Bavaria beer. And the brewery was located near Herbertstrasse and Herbertstrasse actually. This is one really short street in the red light party district where m women are not allowed because girls are displayed in the shop window there. Except prostitutes. Like yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, these these are actually allowed, right? Um, so also the logo of Asteroid, which is like an anchor in the heart, displays this harbor area, northern city. Then HSV, the huge city rival, actually was sponsored by Holsten until 2015. So for 75 years, this was the beer sponsor for HSV. And after 2015, they were sponsored, they are sponsored by Königsbilsner, which is part of the Bitburger group. But nevertheless, even if the Holsten is not the original sponsor anymore, they have a huge sign close to Volksparkstadion, the stadium, um, where there is written, Love knows no league. For Holsten, there is only one club. So you get the feeling like every beer has a club and every club has a beer and the people actually dig that. The ironic thing is the Holsten Brewery actually owns Astra. So in a way they are intertwined, but Holsten Brewery was bought by Carlsberg nowadays. Just that you know, that's an unwritten rule that if you're in Hamburg and you're a Pauli fan, you don't drink Holsten or König Pilsner. And if you're a HSV, HSV fan, you don't drink Astra. But of course, all of these beers are nice. Anna, I hope you enjoy the beers and enjoy our podcast. Shout out to you. But hey, that was our interview. I hope you guys enjoyed it because we really did. And let's watch out for the next game of St. Pauli. It's against Heidenheim. And uh, we definitely will see how the these guys are doing. Yeah, so that's it for today's episode. We'll see you next time on 16 States of Soccer. We'll see you, everyone. situation and the attitude comes from the from the sporting side because um as some of you may know um <coughs> last year they had these two <laughs> 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 <laughs>